Hello, my name is Jill Cox Cordova, and this is the Do Something Different interview. Today's guest is Hugh Moffat, who is an expert writer in many genres. He writes songs and performs them. He writes stage plays, TV pilots, and screenplays. In fact, I had the honor of appearing in one of his shorts. With no further ado, here's Hugh Moffat. The one thing that I've really gotten into that I will continue to do is I've been, I've been uh, like studying math again. I was, a, I started out in college as a physics major. Wow. A creative person that was a physics major? Well, <laughs> creative actually. I, I was interested in so many things that I didn't finish in physics. I, for a brief time, I was a physics English double major and finally figured out that that was going to take me all my life. <laughs> and so I, I, I finished as an English major, but I've always, I've always loved that whole thing. And so I recently discovered the Mathologer video series. And this, uh, this uh, German professor, he's, he's from Germany, but he, he teaches in Australia. He's a mathematician and he puts these amazing animated videos together uh, discussing various proofs and most I'm mostly interested in number theory and and it's uh, they're really really good and I so every night before I go to bed I watch one it's very relaxing it's challenging it gives me something to think about as I go to sleep it's like meditation you know? <laughs> I go over it in my mind these kinds of things and it's really really fun uh, part of what I've been doing for two years is writing a, a blog on my website called Pencils, in which I, I just write about anything that I've thought about in the last 30 years. I've started some of these little essays years and years ago and collected them, and I started publishing on my website two years ago. And uh, some of those are about, are about number theory. Some of those are about the physics things that I like, and some of those are about religion, some are about politics, some are just about thoughts i just it's just all kinds of different things but uh, but this kind of thing goes along with it, you know? it's, but it's so I, I, it's uh yeah i love doing it i used to teach math in elementary school many years ago i had to deal with parents who were who were uh mathophones which is that's that's a, that's not a good uh, impact on the child because <laughs> if you approach it correctly math is really fun and interesting to anybody uh, but if they've got this barrier from the parents, it, it, it makes it a little harder. And so I used to talk to parents about it. And uh, as I would say, you know, you shouldn't be afraid of math. I mean, after all, what else in your life is always the same every time you come back to it? It's, it's, so it's, it can actually be therapeutic. You're talking about math. Seems like a message of hope. Would you agree with that? Well, I, I'm always, always hopeful. I mean, uh, against all reason, uh, the uh, things don't look good right now. Uh, and that, some of that's what I write about in these pencils blogs, um, about how the, 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 um, the trajectory of our, our uh, society is, is not, is not a hopeful one. Um, we have, uh, we have a lot of history that tells us that, um, uh, that civilized societies have a lifespan. And it's sort of, like, uh, even not talking about the particular issues that are the problems, which we should talk about all the time and try to solve them, it's just that in the arc of things over a few centuries, there seems to be just an arc that says, okay, we need to take a breather. <laughs> and this may, maybe, maybe civilization is gonna take a breather. I don't know, I hate to say that. but I think that, um, I know we'll survive, uh, and I, I think we'll learn from it if we don't forget everything because we destroy what we've learned. But if we can preserve our knowledge, math is one of those things. If we can preserve our knowledge, then on the other side of whatever comes next, and by next, I mean the next couple of generations, I'm, I won't say it, um, then uh, people will pick up the pieces and try to learn from our mistakes, and, and we'll, we'll continue. It's, I don't care who you are, you care about the future, not just of you and your family. You care about the future of society and of the human race. And uh, 
problems. To be hopeful about that in the long run can can give a lot of a lot of courage and a lot of energy for now because you know the biggest uh, existential threat to our nation for its entire existence has been the the the, uh, the racial issues. If we can talk to each other. If we can continue to, if we can try to reach across these uh, tribal identities that we're starting to create even stronger and just talk without even an agenda, just talking, um, it creates a level of understanding and that creates a level of respect and that offers hope. You can't just stand in the way and, and discount anybody who's talking, anybody who's feeling. You have to listen. Thank you.